Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. John's this morning. Welcome to this Requiem Eucharist, which we offer for the repose of the soul of Don Bidgood. And as we offer Mass for him, we offer this Eucharist too for all those whom we love but see no longer. And also, of course, we think of those who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. And we remember especially all those who have died alone, unsupported, unloved. And as we offer this Mass for the repose of Don's soul, we pray for his family, for all those who grieve for him, asking that they may be upheld by the love and mercy of God, that they may have hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, which transforms life itself. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind and confess our sins. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the Father's right hand to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Maker and Redeemer, Grant us with your servant Don Bidgood and all the faithful departed the sure benefits of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection. That on the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's listen to the Scriptures. reading from the book of Job. Ah, would that these words of mine were written down, inscribed on some monument, with iron chisel and engraving tool, cut into the rock forever. This I know, that my avenger lives, and he, the last, will take his stand on earth. After my awaking, he will set me close to him, and from my flesh I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part. These eyes will gaze on him and find him not aloof. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light and, and my help. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light and, and my, my help. help. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light and, and my help. 
I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is my light and, and my help. help. Almighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, you must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us that they'd seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found nothing, everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, you foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It's nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions who said to them, yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they'd recognized him at the breaking of bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down for just a moment two takeaways from that gospel, brief takeaways. The first is that Jesus, in speaking to his disciples, uh, referencing passages in the Old Testament, what Jesus is doing is explaining to his disciples the mystery and meaning of suffering. Because we believe in a God 
who is not the cause of suffering. God can never be that. Rather, we believe in a God who embraces our suffering to the most extreme level, as we see in the cross of Christ. So, when we're in pain, it is, as it were, an invitation to share in the passion and suffering of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And it's a hard thing to say this, but we need to embrace and hold that pain and try and see God speaking to us through it. I have that t-shirt. I know that's what one can do. The second thing, of course, is that the Lord shows himself after his resurrection in the breaking of the bread, just as he had shown himself to the disciples at the Last Supper. And, you know, the Christian view of what it means to be human is amazingly optimistic because, first of all, we say that we're created in the image of God, which is joyous in itself. And the second thing is that we believe, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we believe that we've been given the most amazing gift, not just the gift of life in this world, but the gift of life in the next world, when we shall be called to reflect back to God that wonder and beauty that God is so profoundly in himself. It's the most amazing, positive view of what it means to be human. And it means that we are never lost, we are never alone, because we will be ultimately engaged in the worship of God in heaven. But in the Eucharist, in the breaking of the bread, all of that is focused both what we shall become, but also what and who we are as we find ourselves given the gift of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar. That is a glimpse of our ultimate destiny. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Don, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, for the memories treasured today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe, Remember for good your servant Don, as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn, Give them patient faith in times of darkness and strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, you are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we commend all those we love in this life and the next to the intercession of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself and shares in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sinfulness. Pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, O Lord, on your servant Don, for whom we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that, reconciled with you, through these devoted offices, he may merit to rise again to life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, giver of life and conqueror of death. For by his death on the cross, your Son, Jesus Christ, offered the one true sacrifice for sin, breaking the power of evil and putting death to flight. Through his resurrection from the dead, you have given us new birth into a living hope, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. The joy of resurrection fills the universe, and so we join with angels and archangels, with all your faithful people, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember your servant Don, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that we, he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Send the Holy Spirit on all who mourn and all your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, our patron, of Hilda and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.